Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Knapp. I'm the Chief Economist at IB Europe. And I just wanted to provide you with an overview of a more economic perspective, macro and macroeconomic perspective on supply chain transparency, and also how it relates to the topic of sustainability. I'll just have a very few minutes, so I'll keep the introduction short and focus more on the machinations of the supply chain and leave the implications for sustainability, economic, environmental, and social to the panel. Programmatic today in Europe, as of our ADEX benchmark study, accounts for around 57% of all display advertising. And this is excluding, and this is actually excluding social. So we have direct IO bookings and we have uh, programmatic. This includes banners, video, native, um, and audio as well. We're seeing a move away from the open market slowly to, to uh, public marketplaces and programmatic direct paths, and also a fast ramp up, in particular in second mover markets in Eastern Europe, etc. Meaning that questions around programmatic transparency and sustainability are not just focused on the leading markets, but they are a pan-European question that every market needs to grapple with. We know how complex chains are. I showed this chart before. Just as a reminder, supply chains in this market have been incredibly complex, and we have in the past seen huge calls for increased transparency, whatever that transparency means, which are now being expanded to uh, kind of understand, well, what does transparency really mean and what does it get us? And does it get us a more kind of economically balanced ecosystem? So economic sustainability, what's the impact on carbon emissions, environmental, and also we mentioned it in the disinformation dis panel, what's the impact on consumers and on civil society? So in a sense, social sustainability. And all these things are affected, at least in part, by the complexity of the chain. And we could see recently on Twitter, fascinating analysis that looked at the potential combinations of supply chains on a single publisher. And very compelling visualization showed there are 40 million possible supply chains. All, of course, creating complexity to manage things and also creating data and their carbon emissions. We can see that relations in the open market are incredibly commoditized meaning here we look at how many DSPs are present across a certain number of SSPs on a sample of five publishers. This is just the open market, not the private market. And we can see most players interact with every other player. So there's not just duplication, there is multiplication going on. But we can see there is a reason why this complexity remains, because if we actually conducted a study here, look across ECPMs, as ECMs, ECPMs across DSP and SSP combinations, we can see huge differences, even controlled for the type and the number of advertisers, hour of day and week, etc. Meaning if we want to tackle environmental and other forms of sustainability, economic sustainability, we need to not just look at the number of paths and with a machete cut these paths, we need to look at the underlying microeconomics of how these actors work with each other and find ways to ensure that it's economically and environmentally sustainable at the same time, plus of course then also socially sustainable. But these things are very important. We can't just cut paths and without understanding how combinations of paths in fact affect advertiser and publisher economics, suggesting that just blindly taking the shortest path is not always the best route. However, we've seen publishers going from the more the better, so volume of integrations to fewer strategic partnerships, which allows them to control more about their supply and demand partners and also understand better how they can develop sustainable business models and branch out into other sustainability discussions in the environmental domain. Here's just an example. This is no judgment of any party, but you can see with some smaller SSPs are very crucial for specific types of inventory, of course, but you can see how quickly in terms of volume of spend, things taper off. Similar things we've seen with buyers, moving to fewer direct programmatic relationships, fewer by in-housing, closer agency SSP partnerships, potentially things like the trade desks, open path, will all also have an effect on transparency of the market and also how sustainable economics, CO2 footprint and other things are. The core issue with, with transparency is we need to define what it really means. There are many initiatives and many definitions. And this timeline here just shows how much work has been done. Yet despite all this work, we still have, I think, more questions than answers so often, in particular, about deciding what do we focus on. Is it about auditing things? Is it about optim uh, optimization? Is it about competition economics, disinfo, or other things? Now, the notion of environmental sustainability has, in a sense, replaced in 
many public ad tech discourses, the idea of transparency as such. It's a new outlet for transparency, but it also gives, I think, justification to the idea, idea of transparency and moves it from an ad tech centric or an ad ops topic to more of a CMO topic as sustainability, of course, is much more sparkly and glitzy as going through SSP logs is. So I think the development is very clear. We moved in marketing from changing consumer behavior in terms of sustainability to carbon offsetting, sponsoring, funding, et cetera, also to a new paradigm where we realize it's actually the complexity of our supply chain. It's these 40 million paths. It's, it's, it's different things that affect how sustainable advertising can be. And activating our digital media in a responsible manner, not blindly shorter paths, but figuring out which path work in which way and emphasizing those paths is going to be crucial. A few questions to take away in terms of future of transparency and its connection with sustainability. We need to define what good really looks like. But there are very different de um, definitions, partly, of course, aligned by what we're focusing on. And also, there are very different incentive structures from different participants in the value chain. We need to understand what is the role of po political disclosure pressures in fostering transparency, how standards existing tools can be better used in new configurations, for instance, to understand what the value of a certain supply chain is. To understand if there are structural changes in the market, post the party cookies, will this automatically have an indicator knock on effect on complexity of chains and thereby foster sustainability in further ways? Also, does the world organization of things that move to one on one relationships in a sense make at least parts of the transparency debate obsolete? What's the economic value creation of transparency? I.e., what are we getting at with transparency? It's important to consider necessarily can we really do a binary short good? long bad or are there more nuanced ways to understand how supply chains can be better for the environment and with those thoughts i'm going to pass back to lauren thank you